All right, folks, we're on beautiful Lake Kiwi. I am in the back of Cane Creek. Got some fish popping the top of the water. I'm doing a little bit of long lining. I've got a couple of 10 and a half foot rods off my port and starboard side. They both have hand tied bucktails. Uh, it's the third and fourth jigs that I actually tied. Uh, first time tying, starting to tie jigs. The metal tail, I got the red rod that is right here has a spinner blade on it. And then this one is just a regular uh, soft body jig. And so what we're doing is there's a creek channel that runs up uh, through the left hand side of this cove that we're in at the back of the creek. A couple weekends ago we did really good. A lot of spotted bass, a lot of crappy, getting ready to move up. And I'm at point six. And I like to troll, get my speed up a little bit for what I'm using. And when I say what I'm using, I'm, all my rods are spooled up with six pound test. I'm running 16th ounce jigs. So I like pulling in between that 0 0.8, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9. That'll get it in that water column to where I want to be. The lake is down a good bit. When I say a good bit, probably four feet. So we're uh, going to move a little bit quicker, get these jigs a little bit higher in the water column. I'm running at point nine. One mile an hour. You got me right there. A beautiful day in the Carolinas. Beautiful day. We are going to be hitting close to 80 degrees tomorrow. It's mid 70s. I've got a long sleeve shirt on, but didn't really need it. Short sleeves really all you need right now. It is uh, absolutely gorgeous. Finished up work, thought I'd come out here for a couple of hours. Hang out with Squirrel. I got a fell in the bass tracker that had just passed a few minutes ago. Looks like he's over hitting some dots, looking for some crappy. I know he probably thinks I'm crazy and I've lost my mind. All right, there we go, bump, bump. Bump on the big rod. Come on, take it on the on the bucktail. He said, I'm gonna get out of here while the getting's good. This guy on pontoon boat sitting here pont sitting here talking to himself. He is going crazy. I see the bait fish in here. They're popping up everywhere. Find the bait, find the fish. Know what they say? No graph, fishing blind. I've just fished it a bunch, so I kind of know where, kind of know what it's like in here, where the, where the snags are, where the channel is. Sun's going down. I don't have a whole lot of light, but fish when you can, right? Work all day, fish when you can. Got some kayakers up in here. If I get a fish on. And I'm talking to y'all, they're gonna think I'm crazy too. I'm gonna twist this boat. We're gonna speed one side up and slow one side down. And you'll usually get a bite right here. Well, I say usually, many times I've got a bite on a turn. And that's something to pay attention to with the jig and the water column. Hey, how are y'all? Good. Get your own. All right, it's right across this point. And he's going to get my other line. Coming to 
the top. one right in here off this point got them on that uh, little electric chicken not a bad little fishy fishy Here in South Carolina, eight inches. So that's gonna be a keeper right there. We'll put him in the box. We get several, may keep them if not. So what I got with that little electric chicken jig, see that's all I've got right there and I like that little paddle tail tip on it it adds a little extra swim right and that being right behind the boat with me making that on that turn where I said might get bit like coming off that middle rod we're still pulling right at point nine and that's not gonna change now these two inch side rods these longer rods that i'm running that's really going to make a difference on one picking up one dropping lower in the water column and the other one not going lower in the water column or coming up in the water column not going lower you got one come on take it take it come on baby take it now baby fish on fish on same one they are liking. Don't. Don't get that. Big guy. He gonna get. He is gonna get wrapped up. In it. Aren't you? You gonna get wrapped up in it? Yep. He's gonna get wrapped up in it. He is wrapped up in it. Another crappy. I'm gonna have a mess. Way better crap. This is what we came here, folks. I'll take a tangle. I'll take a tangle for that one. There you go, electric chicken. Better, not huge, better. We're getting better. All right, we're hitting the shallows here. I am gonna go into warp speed and spin us around right here. We'll try to keep them jigs from hitting the bottom. And again, that is try because there's some brush in here. Now again, I'm making a hard right bend and what's happening with these rods. And this one's still out and a little messed up. So what's happening here is um, with this turn,
this inside rod that I got my hand on this yellow one it's falling way in the water it's probably matter of fact it'll hit the bottom in here because it's that shallow so it's really dropped speed on it I'm up to 1.3 trying to make a turn these are humming I'm pulling the ones on my port side really really fast and so they're gonna be way up in the in the water column and you need to pay attention to that when you're long lining when you go to make a turn in the back of a creek or back of a cove because if you pick one up on the outside turn then you either need to pick your speed up or either you need to lighten the jig up and get that jig up higher in the water column And if you're hitting, you get bit on the starboard side, in this case for me, on the inside bend, whichever way you're turning, I'm going in a clockwise motion here. Then that tells me that that jig needs to be further down in the water column. Those fish are holding closer to the bottom. Need to slow down or put a heavier jig on. I keep it simple. I'm running... 16th ounce jigs if i run an eighth ounce jig i'm doubling up and running two jigs on one line double hook rig but i don't have any of those on today and i'll do that just for color i won't run the same color on both electric chicken on one maybe white on another having a remote control trolling motor doing this makes all the difference in the world especially when i can hit north on this remote point it in the direction I want to go and I don't have to worry about it so when I hit that north button right here and you can see when I do it right now that little north symbol shows up there's a Minn Kota puck on the front of my boat this Bluetooth into the trolling motor that knows where the front of my boat is and the direction I'm wanting to go and I just point it I don't have to worry about all I need to worry about is a rods on the back side all right I'm gonna go ahead and get this electric chicken back out there yeah I think I'm bumping bottom I'm pretty shallow right here and that's another thing that will help you figure out your running depths if you have a depth finder on your boat and you're reading the depth go over a portion of the lake a hump six feet of water see if your jigs are dragging at the distance that you have out the back of the boat with the line size that you're using with the jig size that you're using make a few notes or jot that down so you kind of know if you're running six feet deep seven feet deep eight feet deep at different miles an hour like right now i'm i'm exactly point nine and i should be running around six feet deep with these jigs at this speed And I'm about to run through a whole school of bait fish. That's it today. I didn't have a lot of time. I would love to have been out here just a little bit earlier. But the sun is down. Be losing some daylight. Going to put squirrel in the wind. And head back to the house. <laughs>